Hi guys, my name is Lacey of Spookless and Fat Hips, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's my favorite kind of video. <laughs> Doing a collab video, but this is an oh-so-special collab video because I'm collabing with the collaborator that started it all. Um, today I'm going to be once again collaborating with my bestie, Georgia Harris, here on YouTube for what is kind of like our anniversary collab. If you guys don't know, if you haven't been with me very long or you found me some other way, once upon a time I had like f less than 100 subscribers on um, YouTube and Georgia Harris reached out to me asking if I wanted to do a collab with her, which was crazy because she was someone who had inspired me to start my own channel and I remember freaking out at my best friend's house and being like oh my god ah and then it not only kickstarted my YouTube channel which I am so forever grateful for Georgia thank you but it also like led to one of the closest friendships I've ever had not to be cheesy for a hot second but Georgia really is like a really good friend to me. We talk every single day. We do the podcast together. We're really tight and I the best part about YouTube for me has been the friendships that I've made and I don't know what I would do without Georgia at this point. I'm going to not get so sappy because I will start crying because Georgia means so much to me as a person but I just love her so much and I am so thankful that you two brought us together. Um, way back in the day we did a collaboration talking about things that YouTube had made us buy and that video did really well for me. I think it was the best video that I had ha ever had on my channel and I just, I can't believe the momentum that that caused and just that I was able to find like my best friend through doing that. So whew. anyway, <laughs> so to celebrate our collaboversary, which I believe was like a month ago at this point, but um, we're in relatively the same time spot. Um, George and I are going to be clapping once again, and this time we are going to be talking to you guys about, let me get my prop ready, if we had a realistic makeup collection. <laughs> I love this so much. Here we go. Okay, so it has become somewhat of a meme here on YouTube, like a realistic collection. So a lot of people have put realistic in the title of their makeup collection videos. Really, as a way of like letting people know you don't have to have a huge collection, that you could have a couple items that really work for you and get a lot of looks and a lot of use out of just a few products so you don't have to spend a lot of money. And it really, I think, does stem from a good place. But it also has kind of spiraled into a meme because the term realistic is very relative, obviously. So my huge ass collection that I have to keep in my walls and my floorboards is obviously something that's realistic to me because I really do have it. Also, I think some people took that really genuine, pure intention of like, hey guys, you don't have to spend a lot of money, you can have a collection that you really love that works for you, and has turned it into a way to shame people who do have a large collection. And I don't think there's a right way to wear makeup, I don't think there's a right way to have a collection. So we're just kind of poking fun at that meme today. But also, like, when I think of, like, a realistic collection, okay, so obviously I say my collection is realistic for me, obviously in that same breath my collection is not realistic for most people. I have a huge fucking makeup collection if you did not know. <laughs> it is something that I've put a lot of time and money into, that I'm just a little bit embarrassed by, but it brings me a lot of joy and I love my collection so much and I've gotten to a really good place with it. But I also understand that, you know, I look like a drag queen every day and I do YouTube and what's realistic for me is probably not realistic to most makeup wearers. So the way I went about compiling my realistic makeup collection, I'm going to probably refer to this as alternative timeline, Lacey's makeup collection. Um, I took realistic to mean a couple things. So for one, I wanted to have a realistic storage kind of situation, which is why I have everything in a makeup bag. Because back in the day, before I was the um, trash monster that I am now, all of my makeup did fit in a bag. And most people I know, all of their makeup fits in one bag. Like my mom and my sister and like people in my life who just casually wear makeup. All of their shit fits in one makeup bag. Also, I was like... My first instinct obviously was to just shove all of my Holy Grail products into this and call it a day, but I think another aspect of having a realistic collection is maybe having one that's more affordable and more easily accessible because I think 
it's not realistic to a lot of people to have a Holy Grail foundation that's like $50. I think most people will go into their local Target, CVS, what have you, and just pick something affordable that works for them. So for my collection, I kind of thought, oh, and the last thing also was I think most people realistically cannot get away wearing clown makeup to work every day. I'm very fortunate that I can. A lot of people have to really tone things down and maybe don't want to wear ridiculous makeup even if they could. So I think that all of those things are what I took into consideration. What people really do wear in their everyday life, what people really can afford, what people can make the most use out of, etc. I put it all in a bag, I'm going to reach into the bag, I'm going to talk to you about what alternative timeline Lacey's realistic makeup collection would look like. I do want to sidebar for a second and say that I'm probably going to actually be showing you guys my real collection very soon, which is something that I didn't think I would do, but given that I am moving, which I will talk to you guys in a get ready with me that I just filmed actually, given that I'm moving, I do want to go through my collection section by section and do like a traditional declutter um, in the style that we're used to on YouTube. I don't know how successful I will be, but I feel like any little bit of less makeup I can take across state lines will benefit me. So if this isn't your, if you're like, I want to know what Lacey really has, this is what alternative timeline Lacey has. You'll probably see my real collection very soon. That's just a sidebar getting back on topic. Right away, the reason why these are in my hands is because I think if I had a realistic collection, realistic, alternative timeline Lacey's realistic collection, wouldn't have nearly the amount of makeup brushes that I actually have now. My makeup brush collection is actually absurd. It's actually one of the things that I want to declutter the most because I don't reach for nearly even half of probably the brushes I have. I think a lot of them can be donated probably to Project Beauty Share. I know they're looking for makeup brushes. Makeup brushes and makeup bags I think they need. So those are two things from my collection that I'm definitely going to be sending their way very soon because they're all clean and untouched. And there's so much that I don't actually use. But Realistic Lacey would probably just have one of these Real Technique sets in her Realistic collection because these are really nice brushes. You can get Real Techniques at Target. You can get, get, get them at Ulta. They're very affordable and they're very good quality. So I think, let me see, I thought I had another brush. There we go. I knew I had another brush. I had the blush brush. My shirt is so big that oh, I'm going to have a bra slip soon. I know it. I apologize. The blush brush in this, like, you can get these Real Technique brushes and sets. This is one of my favorite blush brushes ever. I really love their foundation brush. It's dirty. That's why I didn't grab it. Their powder brush, their dual fiber brushes. These are really nice. They're really easily accessible. You can get them on sale very often. And I think this would be, like, the basics of what I had. I feel like back, back in the day before I was, like I said, the trash person I am now, I only used, like, one brush for everything. But if I was someone who, like, loved or just really liked makeup even, maybe not love, and, like, wore it every day, I maybe would have learned about these. And this is probably all I would need, really. Along with the brushes, I would definitely also keep a Real Techniques sponge in my collection. I love the Real Techniques sponge. I use one every day. I have a million of them, so I was able to grab a clean one for this video. I love these guys. I think they're so affordable. I think they're so great. You can bake with them. You can do your foundation with them. You can set powder with them. This and a couple drugstore brushes would be all I needed. In terms of primer, I'm going to go in the order that I would do my makeup. I think I would only ever need the mineral infused face primer from e.l.f. if I was trying to keep a smaller functioning collection because I find this to be basically an exact dupe for my actual favorite primer, which is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. I think that's what it's called, the silicone one. Um, that one I normally get in the huge size every time Ulta has a 20% off sale, and that huge size too will last me like a whole year. But I think that that, it's like if I, I think it'd be unrealistic for the average person to wait for that sale to have such a big size of a primer and then it's so expensive. This is so accessible. This is like six bucks, I think, and it works basically the same. I have somehow convinced myself that the Smashbox one has longev like more longevity to my makeup, but I can't really prove that. <laughs> I really should just do a half and half test and like put this to the test, but this is fine. It's a great silicone primer. Silicone primers are what works best for me, I found, with my skin type. It helps make my makeup look very smooth. It lasts all day. I don't have a single problem with this. I really fucking love this. 
and you can get it in a lot of places. So that would be my go-to primer for sure. I think what would make sense for Alternative Timeline Lacey's Realistic Collection would be not to have my actual Holy Grail foundation, the Too Faced Peach Perfect foundation, because that is very expensive, but to instead have the CoverGirl Clean Matte BB Cream for oily skin in my makeup bag, because like the primer, this is so accessible. And now that CoverGirl is cruelty free, I'm so excited to have this back. I love this BB Cream so much, it has a good coverage for me. It's not too full coverage, it basically just helps even out my skin tone. It's not going to cover anything crazy, but it's enough for me. It still looks like skin. It lasts really well. The reason I love the Too Faced foundation is because my skin still looks like skin with that foundation. I find it still be mattifying though, and it lasts through everything. It lasts through all climates. It lasts for like 18 hours of wear. When I was doing doubles at my job, open to close, I would wear that foundation. I would look great at the end of the day. That's why I love it so much. But this is basically as good as I'm going to get besides the peach foundation, if that makes sense. This does last a really good time. It does last through a lot of things. It's not quite as transfer proof as the peach foundation. If I hug someone wearing the peach foundation, I don't have to worry about half my face coming off on that. I do have that problem with this. But I think for how easy I can grab this, this is for sure what I would want to keep in my bag. And as far as concealer goes, this actually is my new Holy Grail concealer. I haven't talked to you guys about it yet. And it's so affordable and it's a great color match for me. This is the ColourPop No Filter Concealer, which I realize is a very polarizing product, kind of. People either love this or hate this. I'm in the boat if I absolutely love this. It does not make my under eyes look like crap. I am in the shade Fair 02, which I think is the lightest shade beyond the white one. And it's the only found, or concealer rather, that actually highlights my under eyes. I like it so so much it's like six bucks i think you can get it at ulta now instead of using eye primer i've been using this to set my eyes and then putting makeup over that and it looks great i really will never care about heart shape tape again i really like that bh cosmetics concealer but i think i'm just going to use it up and call it a day because this is so much better to me i'm so happy this is an ulta stores now too love it don't need any other concealer don't even need eye primer perfect that checks off two boxes in this bag this realistic bag and then as far as powder goes this is probably one of the pricier things that I would keep the beauty bakery flower better not bitter setting powder I love the flower setting powder I love that there's a light medium dark in this I love the consistency how soft it feels I do think it's mattifying my only qualm with it is that I feel like you can get more product like more bang for your buck there isn't a lot of powder here but it's a really good powder and it supports an indie brand which I love. I was hesitant to actually include indie brands in my realistic collection because I think a lot of people are afraid to try indie brands. I think there's a lot of risk in trying indie brands because unless you've, you're heavily into social media you don't hear a lot about them you don't have a lot of access to them until they do like head to Ulta like Beauty Bakery did. But I think considering the accessibility of this, I can safely keep it in my collection. It's really all I would need for both setting and baking. I do like to bake my under eyes. But something I also couldn't live without, you can't even read this. I'm so close to panning this, it's unreal, but I have 100 backups now, so we're good. Because someone, you guys told me that they discontinued this, so I grabbed like 100 of them. This is um, the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in the old formula in Reserve Your Cabana which I like to use as kind of like a finishing powder to give my skin a really healthy glow. And like I just referenced, they are discontinuing this, which I, f they really need to rethink that decision. But I would also probably keep this as well because I like the way my skin looks. There's only so many things I'm willing to get rid of in this scenario, but I need to have this forever until the day I die. My ride or die bronzer is honestly the butter bronzer from Physicians Formula. I know a lot of people have strong opinions on this as well. This is also a very polarizing product. It smells very heavily like coconut. You either love it or hate it. I really like it, honestly. And also, I wear the shade Light Bronzer. They just had two shades for the longest time. They just now are releasing shades for everyone, which I'm so happy about because I think this is such a great formula. It's not completely matte, which I like. It has a slight satin finish so that your face just has a little bit of radiance to it. And I think this shade 
for me as someone who's so fucking fair works really well it's really hard for me to find bronzers that aren't orange i know us pale people say that all the time but it's really true i find this to be a nice neutral shade I think you can build it up to be kind of heavy, but you can also sheer it out very easily. It goes on pretty sheer. It's just a good bronzer. You, you don't overdo it when you apply it. It's just so nice. It's a little bit more pricey, but I think it's so good. I think it's worth the hype, personally. And then I did need to have a lot of blushes, because I do think having different color blushes to work with your eye looks, your lips, your different tones, whatever you're doing that day, your color schemes... I think you can change a lot about your look with a good blush. So I needed to have a lot of blushes. I couldn't just have one holy, gra holy grail kind of blush. I needed a few. I picked out the NYX Sweet Cheeks Blush Palette, which I've definitely talked about before. Because this, this is such a good formula. And you get a good variety in this palette. You get some super warm oranges. You get really pinks. So you get some more neutral colors. You get some shimmers. So you can make a more like glowy blush with. You can keep it very matte. I for sure would prefer to have this over a lot of singles I think just for ease of use as well as like if I were to travel this makes much more sense in a realistic scenario than having a lot of single blushes. This is so good though. This is really killer for the price. I think these are great quality and I love the variety you get in this. I think it would also work probably for a lot of skin tones as well. I'm gonna jump to brows for a second. I definitely would just use the same two brow products that I use now if I was going to have like a smaller, more condensed collection, I always lay out my brows with the e.l.f. brow pencil first and then go over it with Anastasia Dip Brow. Just how I like my brows, but I think even if I just kept this, that would be pretty realistic for me. Because you can fill them in pretty deep, you can just kind of feather up the front if you need to. I don't know, I always leave the house with brows, even if I'm not putting on any other makeup. If At the very least, I do pencil in them. But... I don't know. I can't live without a brow either. I know these blocky Instagram brows aren't for everyone, but they're for me. Damn it. I need to have both these things. Gonna need a good brow gel too in my realistic collection. So I chose the NYX Control Freak. I chose this over the ColourPop one because while I like the ColourPop one more for its hold, I like the wand of this one better because it's a lot bigger. So it's like one and done for me. And I don't because it's, not, because it's not as thick as the ColourPop one, I don't have to spend as much time working out like that white tone to get it to be clear. So I think just for how easy this product is, I would pick this as my brow gel for my alternative timeline. Yeah, not much else to say. Continuing to go out of order, I only have one mascara too because I don't think you need more than one mascara really at a time. I think if you find one that works for you, keep it. Throw it out every three months, get a new one. I'm sticking with a very affordable one because it then you don't feel guilty. I think when you have, cutting myself off in thought, I think when you go out and buy like a $20 mascara, it's a lot harder for you to dispose of it in the like three month timeline that you're supposed to throw it out in because you put $20 into it. Whereas this is like a $3 mascara. So essentially it's a dollar a month and I could easily get another one, not that big a deal. I picked the Essence Lash Princess Mascara. I think a lot of people love this mascara and I'm one of those people. It has this pointy kind of triangular wand. I love this formula. It doesn't flake on me. I can get it very clumpy and spidery if I want to because I do like that look. But you can also get very fine defined like dainty lashes with this as well. It's just like good drugstore product. I like the wear time, the formula a lot. It's not waterproof, but I don't really care that it is because it just looks good. And as far as like eyeliner goes, I don't have like issues with my eyes watering or anything like that. So I tend to keep it very simple now as it is. This is like the Ulta Beauty gel eyeliner in black, a couple bucks, real simple. I'm not really picky about which gel liners I put in my waterline. So this one was easy, so I grabbed it. In the realm of liquid eyeliner, however, the Physician's Formula Eye Booster 2-in-1 Lash Boosting Eyeliner and Serum. This has been a ride or die for me for a very long time. I love a brush tip. I think this one pen lasts a very long time. You can often get Physician's Formula on sale at Ulta, so you can stock up in that time. It just works. I'm not incredibly picky about liquid eyeliners either. As long as it's a brush tip, I tend to be good. 
So this is the one that I tend to stick with and when I hold it this way it kind of looks like an old timey cigarette. I will say as a surprise to nobody the one thing I kind of struggled with picking for this video was eyeshadow palettes because on the one hand does alternative timeline Lacey still want to have fun with her makeup? Absolutely. On the other hand would it make the most sense for me to have like 10 eyeshadow palettes in this alternative reality? No. And let's say I am working a job where I have to be more conservative. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me to have some of the stuff I have now. I don't know. This hurts my heart because like it really doing this put in perspective how much I cherish my makeup because I do like to be creative with it. But if I maybe couldn't be creative or wasn't interested in being that creative, I just wanted things that worked and were consistent. I think these were these are the things that I would probably have. This is something that is fairly new to me that I'm going to talk about in my birthday haul. This is the Orb of Light Full Moon Palette from Black Moon Cosmetics. I got this when it came to Ulta because I had no interest in paying and buying it anytime before then because it was a little pricey. I used my $10 off birthday coupon to get this and I agree with that price a lot more. However, now that I have this palette, I don't know if I could ever live without it because these are the perfect mattes for me. These are the perfect mattes for the types of looks that I like to do. These work for my skin tone really well. This big shade in the middle that's supposed to be like a base shade for everybody actually is like the perfect transition shade for me because I am so fair that this creates enough color that I can then go in with any other color and create a very nice gradient. So I'm really into this. I've been really into like grabbing this palette, grabbing like a Jelly Much eyeshadow from ColourPop and like being good to go, doing a quick eye look very fast. So this is like a good staple palette for me now. Even like out of the realm of the scenario of like what if I had to pare down my collection? This is something that I really can like grab for almost daily and can't see myself not having. I think it makes a great companion palette for a lot of other things as well. And then when it came to all of the other palettes, I do have five palettes all together. I think in this scenario, let's say I still love makeup a lot, let's say I maybe didn't have the resources to have a lot of palettes or the ones that I had really had to be meaningful or I just needed things that I knew were going to work for me. I tried to put a lot of thought into this. I really, a lot of what went into this also was formulas that I know that work. Like I don't have time in this um, realistic collection to hang on to things that I have to doctor to get to work or that I have to like manipulate the rest of my routine to get to work or that I have to treat differently. These are all formulas that I know are going to work very well for me and colors that I know work very well for me that I love a lot. That's why I picked them. So I had to go with at least one ColourPop palette because like a lot of the other things I've talked about this is so affordable but this is also just my favorite ColourPop palette. I think this has the best color story. This is the Good Sport palette. It's what I'm wearing on my eyes today. You should have seen it in a get- no you will see it in a get ready with me. I love this because it's such a fun color story and I think if I wasn't really playing with a lot of color in my real life, this would be something that would be just enough for me because you can get more like neutral looks with it, more wearable looks with it. You can also add some of these pops of color for something more fun. You can do something really dark and grungy. And plus this formula, like I referenced earlier, is one that just works for me. I don't have to put a primer on. I can do it over concealer. It looks good every single time. I can use this quick. I know that my looks will blend easily and be consistent and nice. I don't have to worry about fucking up my eyeshadow and then having to deal with that before and being late for work. It just works and it's beautiful. Along the same lines is the Gemini palette from Melt Cosmetics, which is so crumbly. I have talked about this so much. I'm going to keep talking about it. This is one of my ride or die palettes now. This is so good. I love the looks I create with this every single time. I think because I have dark eyes and glasses, I can get away wearing a grungy look and have it look just more like every day on me, if that makes sense. Like it's not so striking on me because I cover everything up with glasses. So I think I could make this work in a professional setting in this dimension, but also still have a lot of fun with this and still keep those grungy colors that you guys know that I love so much. And this is also another formula that just works very well for me and very easily for me. I don't have to really think about it a lot. Something a little shocking though, I don't actually think you guys know that I have this. I think I might have even anti hauled it at one point. I will explain. Um, this is the Soft Glam Palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I'm going to 
get the brush out of the way. Um, I think for a lot of people, this is their go-to neutrals palette. Myself included. Um, when I was job hunting for the job that I currently have, I was running into a problem where I didn't really actually have a lot of good neutral shadows in my collection because I thought they were all boring and decluttered a lot of them throughout the years. And then when it came down to like making a look that was work appropriate, I didn't really have a lot of things that were reliable. <laughs> Believe it or not. So I was in an Ulta one day and I saw this and I was swatching it and it's just such a good fucking formula. ABH is so fucking good. Like goddamn that I was like, I'm going to get this and I'm going to make pretty looks and I'm going to feel good about myself and go get a fucking job. And that's exactly what I did. I wore this palette during my interview for the job that I have now. And then I masqueraded as a normal person for like the first couple weeks wearing this palette to my job before I realized that I could wear whatever makeup I wanted and it didn't mean anything. But that being said, I think when I do a job hunt in the near future, because I'm moving, I'm going to have to find a new job soon, blah, 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 you'll hear about, you'll hear about this in the Get Ready With Me. I think once again, I'm going to have to reach for this and reach for how simple and beautiful these colors are in a way that's also very work appropriate. Again, I think I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm going to need that professional, the professional ness that I can create in this palette once again very soon. Also, like I referenced with the other things, this is a formula that just works like Joe Dirt. It just does. Like it really is such a good formula. It blends so easily and so effortlessly. I don't have to think about it. I can shear out colors very easily. I can smoke them up really easily. I could do something probably very sultry and sexy with this. I can do something very simple and work appropriate with this. Something very striking and stunning. I get it, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I should talk this palette. I get it. I understand. I'm sorry. We can't be weird all the time. I think all of these colors just work so nicely together. This was so thought out. I think for a lot of people, this is probably like their go-to everyday palette, and I am pick putting it in this scenario for that reason. Sue me. I still hate the fucking carpet packaging, though. Also, I think the mattes in this go well with like every other palette in the world. I have noticed that like if I need like a good transition shade and it's not another palette, I can grab this palette and it works. It pairs well, it, like it plays well with other palettes. I've noticed all of the ABH palettes seem to play well with other palettes for me. But let's say I did want some color because I think even in this alternative universe, I would still want to have fun with makeup and do fun things. I just need one good staple rainbow palette. So I picked the Ace Beauté Slice of Paradise palette. This is from their Paradise Collection. I picked this one over something like my Sugar Pill Singles because of how simple this is. It's straightforward. I get all of the primary colors. I think I can mix these with all the other palettes that I've chosen. Amp up any kind of look. Make any kind of look fun. And I really like the way these perform because they're very pigmented. So I just, I feel like that's a good tip for most, for like anyone starting out in a collection is you really just need one good rainbow palette that's going to work for you and that's going to help amp up all of your other palettes. So I needed to have that in this collection. I was able to narrow down to two highlighters in my realistic collection because these are two that just work for me. You can mix them together, you can wear them alone, they're so blinding. The Ofra highlighters, man, I love them so much. Ofra Rodeo Drive, Ofra Pillow Talk. One is a light champagne gold. The other is a very frosty pink. Both of these work so well for my skin tone. They're both so blinding. This is such a good formula. Is it dusty as hell? Absolutely. But it's so good. It's so pretty. I would think I only need these two colors and I'd be good to go for everything. It was very tempting for me to, to pick my Give Me Glow um, 9x9 gigantic ass fucking expensive palette though because realistically if you had to take all my highlighters away from me that would be the palette I'd want to keep but it's so expensive and so gigantic that it's just not realistic and I hate it but I love it. And actually the hardest thing of this really was lip products because I love lip products. I probably have more lip products than anything else which I realize is shocking but I just think you can change your whole look with your lip product. It's such a... Like, you, I don't feel finished till I have my lips on, but I probably wouldn't need much in this universe where I have to wear simple colors to work and I don't have a lot of time or space. So I picked two ColourPop lippy sticks because they're comfortable and they're affordable and they just work for me. And I picked two glosses. 
So I have Oh Snap and Taurus in um, the colored lippy stick, the ColourPop lippy stick formula, like I just said. Taurus is a fun, um, grungy, dark chocolate brown, which is enough yellow in it to be grungy, like I just said. And then Oh Snap is like a cooler tone nude. And I just think either one of those would be perfect for any look that I did and would probably be work appropriate enough for any look that I did. And then I also picked Gloss Bombs from Fenty. These are definitely pricier, but I think they're so flattering and such a good formula that these could be like my fun splurge items in my realistic collection. I picked Fussy and Fenty Glow, the original Gloss Bomb. One is a little bit more pink, one is a little bit more warm tone peachy. Beautiful, beautiful. Glosses have been the way to go for me at work. Really, it's so simple to throw a gloss in my pocket to reapply whenever I need to reapply. It looks good, it looks pretty, it makes my look complete. These would be good for me. Though it makes me sad to have to imagine myself in a world where I only have four lip products. Just two final like miscellaneous products that I think I would want to keep in this collection as well. Just some setting spray. I've used a lot of setting spray and I find them all to be basically the same. I know a lot of people might not agree with me, but I literally, I never notice a difference between any setting spray that I use. So the one that I currently have, the one that I currently buy because it's perfect in my price range. And I go through so much setting spray also that I need to keep it relatively affordable, I should say. This is the Makeup Revolution Sport Fix Extra Hold Makeup Fixing Spray. I use this to foil eyeshadows. I use this to set my face. I use it to dampen my brush. I just, or my, um, my beauty blender, I should say. Beauty sponge, whatever the fuck. This just does the job. It's nice and affordable. You can get Makeup Revolution on sale most of the time. You can use Ulta coupons on them works for me. And then something just miscellaneous that I forgot to talk about earlier. While I don't really use eye primer a lot anymore, I can't live without a glitter primer. I always put a glitter primer down before I put my crease, or not my crease, my lid shade on. And so I just have the e.l.f. one. It's still in the packaging because this is actually from my backup drawer because I'm trying to finish up the Too Faced glitter primer right now. But this is so expensive that I wouldn't realistically need this. I actually got this for free as like a sample from Ulta. The one I was using before then was the e.l.f. glitter primer. I've tried the NYX one. I think they all relatively work the same if I'm going to be honest. The NYX one and the Too Faced one are a little bit stickier. They're not as um, like liquidy or viscous. So I kind of like them a little bit better for that reason. Maybe I would have the NYX one in my bag. But if not, this e.l.f. one's a couple bucks and it just does the job. When you put a glitter glue down before you put your lid shade on, everything just looks so foiled and it stays perfectly in place and I don't have to worry about creasing or fading throughout the day. So this is a staple for sure in my collection, whether I have a full makeup room or just one makeup bag. And then I have literally packed everything back in this bag to show you guys that I really did think about this. I really did think about if it all had to sit in one place. Granted, I did pick pretty much the largest makeup bag that I had. I got this for free from Ulta as well. But it's all in here. It's realistically in here. <laughs> That's my realistic makeup collection. That is everything that a Lacey who exists in a different universe, who had a more professional job, who maybe didn't have as much money, or maybe didn't just give a fuck about makeup as much, my Tamagotchi has interrupted me nonstop throughout multiple videos today. I'm going fucking crazy. I don't even remember what I was saying, but this is it. This is what I would have if I maybe had a smaller budget, less room, less of an interest in makeup, a more professional job. This is the makeup collection that I think I would have. I want to reiterate one more time that the word realistic obviously is going to be different for everyone. I chose these kind of factors to focus on, but obviously what I what my realistic makeup collection looks like is what I realistically have. Everyone's realistic makeup collection is relative to them. This is all in good fun. <laughs> I hope that was obvious that I wasn't trying to poke fun at people who put that in their titles. I'm more so poking fun at the idea of shaming anybody into any one type of collection. Does that make sense? Anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Georgia, for collabing with me once again. I can't believe 
we've been friends for a year and that this crazy YouTube journey has been going on for me for like a year. I just, I can't believe we do the podcast together. I can't believe how fun and successful that has been. This is all fucking crazy. I never thought this is what YouTube would be for me, but I'm so thankful and so glad that it is. And I don't think my life on YouTube would be this way if it wasn't for you, Georgia, and our friendship. So thank you for that. <laughs> ah, gosh. Yeah, that is everything I have to say. Let me know what your realistic makeup collection looks like in the comments down below. Let me know what you think of my picks. If you would pick the same things, if you had to shove all of your belongings in a makeup bag and call it a day, or if you do that, what are your favorite products? Talk to me down below. Also, what do you guys think about people putting realistic in their uh, makeup collection videos? Do you find it to be annoying? Do you find it to be helpful? Do you see where people are coming from? Because I swear, I'm not trying to like shit on people who are trying to encourage like sh smart spending and like making the best of your collection. I'm just making fun of like any kind of elite attitude that may arise from that. <laughs> anyway, we all can't be horrific people like me. If you like this video, I'm going to continue to hold this bad boy because it just feels good. If you like this video, if you like makeup collection videos, and if you like me, please hit like and subscribe. Obviously, go check out Georgia if you haven't already. I imagine if you are a fan of my channel, you probably have found me through her to begin with. But if you haven't, I'll link her and her video down below. I love you, Georgia. Thank you for collabing with me. You can also follow me on my Instagram, which is also Spooky Lips and Fat Hips, to find out what I am realistically buying in real time because I post product pictures constantly. Other than that, chat with me down below, and that is all I have to say. Whew. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>